Hello all. Today is a sad day. It is a very sad day because this is the last of our Greek myth lesson videos. <gasps> but that's okay because we have had lots of fun learning about the Greek myths during our lesson videos and our mini lessons. If you have not watched the other ones, you are in luck because you can watch them all after this one. Today, my friends, is going to be a summary of all the myths we have learned on this Greek adventure. Can you remember them? We have Odysseus and the Cyclops, Arachne the Weaver, Theseus and the Minotaur, and lastly, we have Pandora's box. Tell the person next to you which one was your favorite and remember to tell them why. I would have to say that my favorite one is Pandora's box. The last bit of the story makes me feel so happy. Even when things might be going wrong, there's always a little bit of hope. In Greece, they have a history of telling stories. The ancient Greeks would tell stories in many different ways. One way that I find very interesting are these certain vases. They are clay vases that have paintings painted on the side and the paintings tell a story. Mostly nowadays you will find souvenir ones in shops, but you can find the real ones in some museums. These vases can come in lots of different shapes and sizes and they can tell us a lot about the ancient Greek culture and beliefs. Because they were built to last, archaeologists and historians can find out lots about the ancient Greek culture and they can tell us about them today. What I find quite interesting and what I like most about it are these vases are guarded and kept so secret and safe in museums but originally they were made to be put outside houses here in Greece where they were probably fading in the Mediterranean sun. These vases tell the story of ancient Greek people. So why don't we make our own vases to tell the stories of our own lives? We're going to be using a really fun coloring and scratching technique, but I'll talk more about that later. Firstly, we need to think of some really interesting and important things that have happened in our own lives. So have a discussion now with the people next to you about some really important things that have happened to you. So what are some of the important things that have happened in your life? Maybe some of you got a new sibling, maybe some of you moved house, or maybe you went on a great big adventure. There are lots of things you can write about and we're going to be using those important things right now. So to get started you're going to need a piece of paper, maybe A4. If you don't have one right now, go and get one. So what I need you to do, fold the paper in half and then fold the paper in half again. When you unfold it you should have four different sections. And on those four sections, we're going to be drawing four of the important things that have happened in your lives. So, you can hear some of the important things of my life and you can see what I drew. Let's go. For me, it was the first time I went on a plane. That started my love of traveling. Secondly, it was when I won my first running race. Racing was a big part of my life when I was younger. Thirdly, it was the moment I saw my cat Jasper as a little kitten looking back at me with those big beautiful eyes. My fourth one is when I moved overseas to London. Of course there are other important moments that have happened in my life, but these are the four that I want to choose for my vase. So I will let you start drawing now and when you're done I'll see you right back here. You're back. That means that you have drawn your four different pictures or nearly finished drawing them. Everyone's pages should look different because everyone's lives have been different and they're all unique. But now we need to put our drawings to the side because we need to make our vase as the base. So let's listen to the instructions on how to make the vase. Step 1. Choose which shape you would like for your vase. Step 2. 
Draw the outline of the vase that you would like. Step 3. Colour the vase in. You can use the traditional colours or you can be creative. Step 4. Now you're going to paint over the vase with black paint. Make sure you are careful to stay in the lines. The paint works better if you mix it with a tiny bit of dishwashing liquid. Step 5. Let the paint dry. You may need to paint another layer if the first one was not thick enough. Step 6. You can start scratching away to show the under colours. Here are some patterns that you could use for the borders. Step 7. Now there are two ways that you can add your pictures of your life. One, you can scratch a big area and then draw in a black pen. Or, if you feel that you are confident enough, you can scratch the black away to create your pictures. Step 8. Have fun! So those are the instructions so you should all be ready to go. Just one reminder, just press lightly when you're scratching so you don't make any holes or rips in the paper. And remember to stay tuned for the mini lesson because we're going to be writing short stories to match the pictures that will be on your vase. Have fun and I'll see you in the mini lesson. Thanks for watching. Why not continue learning by clicking on one of these lesson videos and make sure to click that subscribe button. Happy travels.